Okay, <clears throat> well this next little project is an electronic one, so all you guys who watch my channel for the steam engine stuff, you may want to skip this. So what's this all about then? Well, I quite enjoy playing around with all sorts of electronic kit, and one of the things I quite like is GPS stuff. So we've got a couple of examples of GPS kit here. This is a very old Garmin GPS 3 that dates from I think about 1996, about 27 years old. It works fine, particularly if you stick an external antenna on it. And um, yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. These are really nice units, actually. I bought a couple of them off eBay about 10 years ago for next to nothing. Uh, so one of them worked, the other one, the, somebody had left batteries in it, so it, it was knackered. But yeah, that one still works fine. This is kind of a modern equivalent, but with no bells and whistles on it. This is U-Block Neo, which is a modern GPS. <laughs> well, unit and as you can see it's absolutely tiny that's the ceramic aerial these are used mainly by uh, the RC modelers for radio control model aircraft they're also used in drones quadcopters that kind of thing um, and yeah both of these output a serial data stream and that's what we're really interested in today serial data streams and normally I would connect both of these items up to a computer a laptop or a desktop PC to look at the data coming out of them but it occurred to me that the old Arduino, and here we have an Arduino Nano, which is what I generally use for my Arduino projects, could, in conjunction with one of these little ILI9341 TFT displays, you could make yourself a very basic serial terminal stroke monitor, which would do the same thing. And not only that, you, you know, you wouldn't need to have a computer handy that you could run all this off of a battery. And yeah, I didn't see uh, why it wouldn't be possible. So, <clears throat> I did a bit of a deep dive on the old interweb <clears throat> because I didn't really see if there was any point in reinventing the wheel. I thought maybe somebody else had already done this and I found an absolutely brilliant website uh, by a guy called Bodma and he'd already done exactly what I was thinking of doing. And he had uh, also modified the libraries that uh, drive the ILI9341 to include some sketches that he'd done, one of which was exactly what I wanted, a terminal serial monitor. Now I've lashed it up on some breadboard and the connections to the, from the Arduino to the TFT are fairly straightforward and you can find those anywhere on the internet. The only other thing I've added, added is this little doohickey here. Now all this is, is a simple level shifter so that I can actually connect proper RS-232 serial data uh, in and feed it into the Arduino. Uh, the Arduino obviously is 3.3 uh, volt, five stroke five volt um, logic on it. So you cannot feed RS-232 directly into the Arduino because it, the signal levels are too high. This is simply a level shifter. will drop the RS-232 signals down to ones that the Arduino can handle. Now, <coughs> the beauty of this system <clears throat> is that you can feed data into the Arduino in two different ways. You can feed it in through the USB port here. So if you've got it connected to a computer, you can feed the data in that way um, or anything else that outputs over USB. But you can also the, feed it straight into the RX pin, which is over here on the Arduino. And that's what we'll do. This is what this is connected to. So if I actually want to plug a RS-232 lead in from a serial port on something, I can feed it directly into the RX pin on the Arduino. I can also feed other TTL data, like the data from the Ublox GPS. That is already at a TTL level, so I can feed that directly into the RX pin on the uh, on the Arduino. So the first thing we're going to use our little terminal for is actually as an RS-232 connected dumb terminal. So this is my trusty T30 ThinkPad, that's circa 2002-2003, still going strong. One of the beauties of the T30 is it was one of the last ThinkPads to still have a serial port. So we've got our RS-232 lead connected into the serial port on the back of the laptop and it goes up and it's connected into the serial level converter, RS-232 level converter on our terminal. So I'll move this back round and move the terminal in and we'll have a close up and we'll, we'll try talking to it. Now, many, many, many years ago, Microsoft 
included a really useful little program with their operating systems. It was called Terminal. And it was basically um, uh, this little window here, which allows you to connect through uh, various different serial ports on your computer and basically talk to anything over the serial port. So we've got this set up today and hopefully what should happen is that anything I type in here should appear on the on the little terminal screen. So here we go. And there it is. And we should be able to do a carriage return on line feed, which we can. Yeah, we go. Look at that. Lovely. So basically anything I type on the laptop should be echoed on the terminal screen. Which it is. It works superbly. Yeah, so that, that is actually quite a useful useful feature. So that's proper RS-232 out of the serial port COM1 on the IBM ThinkPad going into the, our little level shifter here through the Arduino onto the screen. And it, wor it works fine. Okay, so for the next test, we're going to try uh, connecting up to the my old Garmin GPS3 unit here. And again, th this outputs RS-232. So I've got it going through. There's a mass of cables here, but basically the, the, the cable that, that is supplied with the Garmin unit ends in a female nine-way D-type, and I need a male nine-way D-type to plug into that. So this cable here is just a split up with different plugs on the end of it. So uh, you will also have noticed, uh, we'll close in on the uh, terminal. that it is now set to a different board rate. Uh, the Garmin unit is only outputs 4,800 boards. So I've had to reprogram the Arduino for a lower board rate. That's about the only fag with this. If you want to change the board rate, you've got to reprogram it, but it's it's not difficult. It really isn't. Just come back out again. So, now Garmin have their own standard proprietary format for GPS data, but you can, in the settings, uh, change this so that it outputs standard Namir. So we'll turn it on and see what happens. And away we go. Not quite sure why there was that hesitation there. Probably just the GPS unit booting up, but yeah, it's it appears to be outputting the right data. It's uh, now it's not going to pick up any satellites because I haven't even got an aerial plugged into it. And again, I'm downstairs in my in my workshop, so you know. But we'll uh, close in on the terminal screen. Yeah, there you go. That's that's uh, that is the mere data. There's only one slight anomaly, and that is it is there should be a dollar sign at the end of each one of these strings, but it is in fact a pound, and that's obviously got to do with I think the VT100 uh, emulation that's going on inside the Arduino. But yeah, that is perfectly correct. That's exactly what it it should be outputting. So uh, I just thought that would be this is something different. It's not a computer. It's actually a device. So. Yeah, again, that's useful. So we can use it to look at um, a GPS data. That's a, an, another use for it. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to feed data into this thing from quite a variety of different sources because to give you an idea of what it's, it's capable of doing. So first up, we've got the most modern laptop that I've got. This is a Lenovo Z61T, and this comes from around about the year 2006. So, you know, brand new whiz bang kit. But this is quite useful because this one doesn't have any serial ports on it, but it does have a USB ports, obviously, and we're gonna connect the uh, terminal up to the laptop using the USB lead. Okay, so we've got it connected up to my uh, super flash brand new 2006 Lenovo Z61T. I'm running a piece of software which was written by a colleague of mine <laughs> back when I used to work full time. And this was basically used to send serial strings and hex strings out on the COM port so that you could just test devices that required those serial strings. And it's ideal for this because we, we got it connected up via the USB lead and we're going to send it some data from this program and it should be mirrored on there. So 
uh, we got the right COM port selected, which is six. Then we open the port and then we type in a string. Oh, can't spell. And then basically if I click send string, it should mirror it on our display terminal, which it does. Excellent. If I send it again and again and again and again, and this program has a, I can put a time period in, it will put hundred milliseconds and I can go repetitive and it will just keep sending it. And there you go. Perfecto. So that, that, that just demonstrates the serial terminal connected to the laptop. We'll stop that um, and clear that. And if I put some spaces in and then go repetitive, it should clear the screen. There we go. Perfect. Now, just like we did before on the really old laptop, we can do some real time uh, sending. Right, so if I type in here, um, you can't, it doesn't echo, but, but if I type in there, it should appear in real time on there. So if we go, uh, let's have a look. And there it is on the terminal screen. So that's the USB connection straight in from the laptop into the into our terminal. OK, so completely different setup here. I'm going to leave it in the retort stand because it's quite useful for filming. Um, the little display terminal is now powered by battery and I've got the uh, Ubrox Neo GPS unit uh, powered up from the five volts that's on board and I'm going to connect the transmitted output from this uh, directly into the RX pin on the on the Arduino Nano. So we'll move up to the display so you can see what happens when I do that. Okay, so what you've got scrolling up the screen, let's close in on that a little bit. That's some standard uh, GPS Namir data, uh, but um, yeah, it works really well. <clears throat> this is what I'd expect to see. You can program the uh, G GPS unit to output different strings, but these are, these are the kind, these, these are the default strings and, and they're fine. The only um, little anomaly is that each string should begin with a dollar sign and it is in fact beginning with a pound sign. But that's not relevant because that's not what we're interested in is what comes after that. So, and as you can see that that is, that is working, that's working fine. We'll come back out again. Yeah. There we go. So you just got the battery, the monitor and the little GPS unit. Now, it won't lock onto any satellites because we are downstairs in my house in my workshop um, and um, it's just not going to pick anything up from there. But uh, the reason I've got all this long cable is because when, I've, when I'm using this up in, upstairs in, in my office, I can put this by the window and it picks up satellites, no sweat doing that. So there you go, that's direct, a direct input. But there's, there's other things we can do as well. So the next thing we've got plugged in is this little module here. Now this is a very cheap, simple, infrared receiver module and it comes with a little remote there we go and you can use those for all sorts of things you can make your own door locks you know activated by the remote this kind of thing you know but we can have some fun with this because i don't know whether uh, this is going to interpret the codes coming out of this but this has got a ttl serial output so i'm going to go through the buttons on the remote and we'll see what what if any codes we get come up on the display let's, let's close in on that a bit so I'm just going to go through the buttons in order. OK, so that recognize that as E, that as F, that as G, D, 
looks like an at sign C nothing for the minus nothing for the plus nothing for the EQ okay zero 100 200 oh 200 is um, <clears throat> carriage uh, line feed excellent okay number one number two you can see the light flashing on the receiver when it's receiving data three number three looks like it's the um, up arrow four five six z seven eight nine so it does it does recognize some of the characters which is cool wind that up so okay well while we're on the subject <laughs> <laughs> Why not have a go with this? Let me come back out a bit so you can see. You, know, you can have fun with the remotes. Now this remote is from my DVDO. Now the DVDO is is an upscaler, which is I use on my laser disc players. So we'll try some buttons on here. See what what that does. See whether it registers any of the codes. Okay, so we're going to go across the buttons on the bottom. This these ones here. So what do we got? Oh yeah. B, E, G, nothing for that one. W, O, N, J. So it's putting a space, oh, not that time, but the others it's putting a space in. Nothing on those. Y, Z, K. Let's try these others. P. The arrow keys don't appear to do anything. Neither does the enter. Menu does. Exit does. So obviously the, the keys that aren't displaying anything are, are sending data. It's just that it, the Arduino can't interpret those codes. So Yeah, so you know, you can have loads of fun with this. <laughs> <laughs> various different remotes but anyway that's just another example so this is this outputs a ttl serial data stream and i'm feeding it directly into the rx pin on the arduino and uh yeah so another another use for it you want to see what your uh, infrared remote controllers are outputting <laughs> oh it's good for a giggle well i think that about wraps it up for the little arduino serial terminal Sorry the video has been a bit long, but I wanted to show you all the different things it could do and it just takes time to cover it. But these little Arduinos are really uh, amazing little devices and, and, and uh, none of this is particularly expensive. I think these displays are around about oh, 12 pounds, something like that. The Nanos go for about eight pounds now. That was a couple of quid, I think two pounds 50. So, you know, we're not talking uh, horrendous amounts of money. So as always, thanks for watching. I hope some of you out there found this useful and interesting. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.